Good afternoon. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to everyone who's joining us here uh, in the room and everyone who is online. Uh, my name is Miguel Naranjo. I am program officer with the UNFCCC Secretariat, and I will be your, your moderator, your facilitator today. I'm particularly happy in this case because we have had um, a, a quite a, a active participation in the preparation of this uh, event of today and the Net Zero Carbon Events Pledge, which is being presented to you today. So uh, we have prepared a, a program where you will hear what the pledge is, what it entails, how it came to be. And then you will hear from two different sets of uh, participants in the, in the industry about uh, why they decided to join, uh, why they decided to support, and what are their expectations uh, moving forward. So since uh, we're always tight on time, and particularly now with, uh, with these events, uh, I would like to jump straight ahead into the first message that we have for you. Uh, this is coming from Mr. Abdullah Shahid. He is uh, the president of the United Nations General Assembly. He could not join uh, live, but he has sent a recorded message, as is the, the custom. So if the technical team can help us with the video. Thank you. Excellencies, friends, I thank UNFCCC for the invitation to participate in today's event. I also want to acknowledge UNFCCC's hard work engaging with multiple partners across many sectors to deliver on climate action. Addressing the carbon impact of the events industry is an essential measure that industry professionals need to take seriously if they want to adhere to growing public concern about climate change. Although the events industry is not often scrutinized as a large contributor to carbon emissions, the concern and impact it has on the environment is real. My message today is the same as it was then. We have the capacity to beat back the climate crisis. And All right, sorry for the technical issue. We'll be sure to share the, the video with you so you can share with the, with the community. And uh, anyway, we want to thank uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Shahid for, for his words. Uh, we'll keep him and, and his team, uh, who have been very interested in this collaboration, updated on, on how it moves forward. Uh, so with that, we gained actually a few seconds, <laughs> and I'm very happy to, uh, to hand over to uh, a person who has been instrumental in, in uh, making this a reality, uh, together with the support of, 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 of his team. Uh, so I would like to hand over to, to Kai, uh, Kai Hattendorf, to uh, walk us through what the pledge actually is. Over to you. Well, thank you, Miguel. And, um Warm welcome to COP26 uh, for all the colleagues from the global event industry in the room and uh, out on the screens. I think we got the most important message from that video message before it cut off, and that was we have to take a climate change. So, um, and this is what we're here to discuss today. Um, my name is Kai Hattendorf. I'm the CEO of UFI, the Global Association of the Exhibitions Industry in my day job, and I'm representing here today the Joint Meetings Industry Council, which is our industry's global umbrella body. A welcome in the name of all the colleagues involved in this initiative. I think we have slides that we can bring up. So we're here to launch this event. Now, when you introduce an industry, there is a common way. In most of these meetings, you, you go by the numbers. And yes, of course, we have numbers that describe us as an industry across all the various segments from trade shows to weddings, from major sporting events to corporate events. But it doesn't tell you really what our role is as an industry. And because the role of our industry is different, 
It goes far beyond the economic effects of us as a business alone. As you see on this picture taken at a random event that I had on my film roll on my iPhone, the events industry connects. It builds the meeting places and the marketplaces that bring people together, connect ideas, innovation, businesses, cultures. People want and people need to come together. And the pandemic has shown us in such a clear light that we need to be together, to work together, and to experience together. We talk about community all the time in our industry, and that's what we do. We support communities coming together. Because when it's important, people meet, and this COP here in Glasgow for these two weeks is another prime example. And to make that happen, that's the core function of us as an industry. So, events are not just drivers of tourism or just boosters of the local economy. Events are essential to the way we live and work. And we've always played this role, but it's never been more critical than now as we recover from the pandemic. Now, my colleagues and I, from across the industry, we've spoken with many government officials over the last 12 months, with many policymakers, with many leaders around the world. And they see the critical role the event sector has to play. Economically, of course, but even more relevant maybe nowadays, so societally and spiritually. And events are critical in so many ways, and we put a few of them on this slide, as trust builders, as reinvention drivers, as innovation drivers, as laboratories for public policies, as generators of talent and investment, and so many more. And so, of course, COP26 here is an event with many event professionals involved. I think I'm done with the slides for now. What brings us here today, then, as an industry, and what's our role as an industry on tackling climate change? Well, we have two roles. The one I already described, the two weeks here at COP26, bring people together, build and operate the platforms. But we also have to make sure that, as the events industry, we commit ourselves to the target of carbon zero. And that's our other role, to make sure that the GHG footprint that events like this one create becomes smaller and smaller and eventually disappear. Today is about this role, our own obligations as an industry. Now, the events sector, I already mentioned that, is a very wide sector, covering everything from trade shows to wedding planners, from global congress organizers to local suppliers. But we are used to collaborate and to collaborate well to make things happen. And so over the past month, we've brought together a global inclusive group of actors from across the event sector. With the support and guidance from Miguel and your team at the UNFCCC, and I've learned to say UNFCCC, we've worked on our sector's journey toward carbon neutrality and zero carbon. So here we are today at COP with an industry commitment that is the result of a broad cross-industry collaboration with 211 supporting actors that came together over this process. And already by today, as we launch this pledge for our industry with 109 initial signatories, and you can see all their names here on the slides. And if you're familiar with the events industry, you will notice familiar brands and major brands. This already is, right from the start here today, a who is who of the sector. The big players, many of the small players as well as this is an inclusive initiative. We have the commitment from the largest and most influential organizations in our sector, so we are confident in our ability to drive this change, to tackle the challenges ahead. So what we are launching here today is the beginning of this journey, but we aren't starting from zero. Across our industry, we have excellent good practices and sustainability champions. And we can build on their work with them all as an industry collaborating, not competing. And my colleagues will talk about this and their approaches later in the program today. But let me now introduce our next speaker, a very special person from the Scottish Events Campus, a person who arguably set us all off on this journey by making the right connections at the right time. And that's something some people in our industry are really good at. And she will now introduce the pledge to you. Ladies and gentlemen, Kathleen Warden. 
Thank you very much, Kai, and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to everyone who is beaming in from wherever you are around the world. Um, as the proud host venue for COP26, it is an enormous privilege to be here today with you and to address the industry in relation to this pledge for net zero carbon events for our future. I am a passionate event professional and I see day in, day out the benefits that events bring to society. But there is an inherent tension between what we do as an industry and climate change and there is a pressing need to address that. By pledging to a net zero carbon future for events, we can galvanise the industry together to take responsibility. Now, as Kai said, this initiative started with some like-minded people who uh, saw the need for global collaboration and therefore we made the connections with some of our global industry associations, ICA, UFE, AIPC, Joint Meetings Industry Council, and of course the corporate meetings community as well through ICE. And then stakeholders from across the industry, our organisers, our venues, suppliers, and most importantly, the sustainability experts from within our teams got together and within a few months started to shape a pledge. Now, as Kai also said, inclusivity is very important. So a first draft was published and over 200 stakeholders expressed interest. That is sending a very clear signal from our industry that it is ready to do more. Through a consultation process, the process our stakeholders have reviewed and edited and formed the pledge that we're sharing today. So by working together in a short space of time, this is a pledge that has been created by the industry, for the industry, and it is a call to action. There are four key pillars to this pledge. The first is that before the end of 2023, organisations are asked to publish their pathway to net zero by 2050 at the latest, earlier if possible, and with an interim target in line with the Paris Agreement's requirement to reduce gl global greenhouse gases by 50% by 2030. Now that's all quite a mouthful. So what does it mean? A clear goal for a 50% reduction by 2030, net zero by 2050, two years to commit to a pathway to doing this, and a public commitment to doing so. The second pillar of this pledge is to collaborate with partners, suppliers, our customers, and our attendees, and drive change. See events through the lens of sustainability and become a champion for net zero events. The third pillar is to measure and track scope one, two, and three greenhouse gases according to industry best practice. Now, we know this is difficult, it's complex, and where are the boundaries, and who's responsible for what? Much to be sorted out. But if we don't measure, we don't know if we're making any progress. The fourth pillar is to report on our progress every two years. This is a challenge for our industry but it's a challenge that we can lean into. And over the course of the next year, consultation will continue to develop a roadmap for net zero events. And this roadmap will offer support and guidance. As Kai said, we don't start this race to zero from zero. Much great work has been done. We are all just at different points on a journey to the same destination. So this pledge, this promise, is the foundation for a lot of challenging work ahead. But one of the reasons I love this industry is because we are an industry that likes to take action. We like to make things happen and we work well to a deadline. So by working together, collaborating, sharing ideas and best practice, we can inspire each other to make this happen and build momentum for real change. On Saturday, I was out for a walk with my husband in the countryside near where we live. And on the way home, we saw a lady pushing two very large suitcases up a hill. It was an instantly identifiable COP26 delegate. So we decided that we had to help. This lady was from a country in South Africa and she was telling us about what climate change means to her. And in her country, they rely on the limited rainfall that they have 
to provide um, water for farming, which is one of their main sources of income and employment. That rainfall also provides um, water to parts of South Africa. What she said to us was that increasing droughts are putting that valuable and vital rainfall source and livelihoods at risk. And it really brought home to me that that's what this pledge is actually all about. So thank you for your time today. And if I could hand back to Kai, who's going to introduce some of our leading industry experts to share some of their knowledge and inf information. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. And thanks for helping that, that COP delegate, because um, I would like to raise your awareness to all these staffers, all these volunteers here at the perimeters, inside, outside the venue. Those are the people who put the smiles on for two weeks straight and they deserve all our recognition for all the great work they're doing. Um, I'm very pleased to now introduce you to some of the most renowned leaders from leading organizations in our industry. They're here to demonstrate our cross-industry and cross-functional collaboration and commitment, and to talk about why this pledge is so important, and to share some highlights of work that is underway. And let's go stateside first. Alan. Welcome to, welcome to Scotland, Ellen Steele, President and CEO of the New York Convention Center, Oper Co New York Convention Center Operating Corporation. We all call it Javits. That's a much easier mouthful, Kai, but uh, thank you for that introduction and thanks to you and to Sven Bossu for making all of this happen because without all of the hard work which you guys had done, we would not be sitting here today. So thank you very much for that. Because what has happened now is we have been provided with the opportunity to develop a common template to address issues that are very diverse across the industry that we represent. Um, this allows us to begin activating a roadmap within the industry, and it provides us with accountability for us and for our partners and a way of measuring our success and our progress. We at Javits have been fortunate because we had a major renovation of our building in 2014, and one of the key elements of that renovation was the introduction of a 6.75 acre green roof, which at the time was the second largest green roof in the United States. That green roof reduces the temperature around us by about 16 degrees centigrade, uh, and it retains about 7 million gallons of stormwater that falls on our roof during the period of a year. Together with our new energy efficient heating and ventilating air conditioning units, we were able to reduce our energy consumption by 26% as a result of that renovation. In the meantime, the green roof itself has become a wildlife sanctuary, and we now have 35 species of birds, we have 17 species of bees, and five species of bats that live on that roof in the middle of Manhattan. And our bees allow us to give out honey to our customers because we collect it and use it as part of our sustainability program. We also began to report uh, our results to New York State. New York State has some very aggressive uh, climate reduction goals, and that reporting required us to hold ourselves accountable and to make sure we reported our progress as we went forward. And so we put in an energy dashboard, which allowed us to both track our use and manage our use so much more effectively than we had before, but also to report that use up to New York State and to help New York State in developing its own new goals. And at the same time, sustainability became very much a core issue for us. Uh, we began to change light bulbs. We've now changed 95% of our light bulbs to LEDs. We created a program we called Javits Cares, which recycles materials that our exhibitors no longer wish to have or take with them when they leave an event, and it produces it for distribution to local not-for-profit charities. And we also designed and implemented a food rescue program, which normally donates about 100,000 pounds of food to local charitable uh, organizations throughout the course of a year. We've also begun to see how much we need to continue to develop our goals. And so uh, we have a new uh, diversion rate policy, which will increase our diversion rate from its current 50% rate to 80% by 2024. We've also, in a second phase of an expansion, added a four-level marshalling facility, which allows us to bring all of the trucks that support our industry and bring goods into the convention center into the building and off the streets in Manhattan, which is a great relief to the community round about us. Uh, we've also added, as part of that development, a one-acre rooftop farm, 
which is currently producing 40,000 pounds of vegetables, which come straight off the table, straight off the farm, into the table, and we have a farm-to-table experience right in the middle of Manhattan. We will begin this year to break ground on a solar plant. We will actually have the largest solar plant in Manhattan, uh, and it will go above our air conditioning units, which means it will not interrupt our green roof program. So we've managed to merge the two technologies together. And together with floodgates that we've instituted on our west side because of flooding from storms like Hurricane Sandy, we've become much more resilient. We've also required in our RFP process sustainability to be a factor for all of our suppliers, trying to make everyone aware of this and trying to make them aware of how important this is to us. So these are just a few examples of the kind of thing that we at Javits are doing. Um, these are not necessarily things that every convention center can do or should do, but what I would encourage every convention center to do is look at how they do things and what they might do that's different. We are already researching how we can put electric charging points for trucks into our truck marshalling building because we see that as the next phase of transportation development. And we're also exploring the possibility of small wind turbines on our roof to complement the green roof and the solar power as we try and maximize its actual its impacts. And I will tell you that it's been an amazing example for our employees because suddenly we went from being a convention center to being a community asset. And the pride that that has generated amongst our employees, especially when they get to help us bottle the honey, is really quite amazing to see. So I would encourage you all to think about what you do, how you can do it, and how you could do it differently. And if any of you would like to have information from us about what we've done, we'd be more than happy to share it with you as part of our standard sharing. You know, being productive about our efforts is important for us. It's important for the industry, and we would be delighted to help anyone else move in the same direction. Thank you, Kai. Thank you, Alan. And I think let's go from the east coast of the U.S. all the way to Hong Kong, where it is 20 past 11 in the evening. And if the internet is with us, we, I can now introduce you to Monica Lee Muller, the Managing Director of the Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Center Management Limited. Good evening, Monica. Ni hao. Hi. Good evening. Um, I think the internet is on. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Thank you, Kai, ladies and gentlemen. I, I wish I were there with you, but uh, I guess uh, we're very well represented. Now, I think all of us here agree that the biggest common enemies the world is facing today is not the pandemic. Rather, the climate change is the most serious threat to mankind on this planet. The exhibition industry is now coming together to fight this battle, and I'm just very excited. The Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Center Management Limited, or HML, is the professional radio management company of the Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Center, the Hong Kong landmark that hosts a thousand mega trade and public exhibition and other events attracting some 8 million people annually, spanning almost uh, the entire population of Hong Kong, as well as influential business leaders from all over the world. We believe we are in a unique position to influence and engage with every one of our stakeholders on the issue of climate change, including events organizers, stand building contractors, exhibitors, buyers and visitors, basically everyone who comes through our doorstep. We have an organization-wide commitment to sustainability. There are no empty words. HML is one of the few venues operators in the world to have gained ISO um, 2121 Event Sustainability Management System accreditations since 2015. We're working to transform our 33 years old buildings towards LEED and BIM Go rating status in 2022. These recognition require commitments from the entire organization, from senior management to frontline staff. Now, the net zero carbon event pledge is a natural extension of what we have already been doing for some time through facilities enhancements, policy making, and behavioral changes in our daily venue operations. Our special um, emphasis has been on reducing energy usage and identifying energy management opportunities. We have invested significant resources to upgrade our building man our management system using latest uh, IoT technologies, installing digital power meters and applying big data analysis to our ventilations 
and air conditioning system to improve our energy efficiency. Many of our venue upgrades aim to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. For example, we have replaced existing lighting with LED lights, changed our air, uh, air handling units to more efficient ones, and optimized our kitchen ventilations. Furthermore, we're about to embark uh, on an enhancement project for our chiller units that will reduce our annual electricity uh, usage by over 2 million kilowatt hours. Once our planned enhancements are complete in 2023, we expect a 20% energy saving compared to 2018, a quite a significant drop in just five years. Saving water has been another focus. Besides replacing 600 taps with water saving devices in all our guest toilets, this year we acquired two smart floor cleaning robots. They use a water filtration system that saves 80% of water usage. HML took a bold decision in 2018 to eliminate single-use plastic utensils and stop serving or selling packages in plastic bottles. The Think Before Plastic campaign was strategically launched at a mega exhibition with over a million attendees. It had an immense impact on public promotions and education. During this first year, we eliminate the use of 2.1 million single-use disposable plastic straw, cutlery, milk boxes, and bottles. Waste reduction is another area where we make big changes. Since 2011, HML has donated large amount of unconsumed food to the needies and underprivileged instead of sending it to the landfill. We are also one of the first organizations in Hong Kong to carry out large-scale source separation of food waste and send it for processing at Hong Kong's Organic Resources Recovery Center. We also promote and facilitate exhibition organizers and participants in waste recycling. Our efforts and convictions to educate, influence, and act against climate change does not stop here. It is clear as a major value uh, in the exhibition industry, as part of this global exhibition industry, we have an important role to play in shaping sustainable practice and mindsets. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we do not have a planet B. I think a lot of um, people out there are saying the same. So we sign the pledge and commit ourselves to act now because our children will not leave on empty promises. As simple as that. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. And uh... thank you, Monica. That was my echo. Thank you, Monica, and good evening to Hong Kong. Indeed, there is no planet B. But let's continue a journey around the world and go to the west coast of the United States of America. Now, we've heard from two colleagues who are operating venues, so the spaces where events take place. And let's move to the CEO of uh, the Freeman Company, which is the largest general service contractor we have across our industry. So everything that comes into a venue and goes out of a venue is handled by, well, probably not by you personally, but by, by, by many of your colleagues. So uh, good morning, Bob Priest-Hack, CEO of Freeman. And good to see the sun is up in California. And you may be on mute. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, good morning and thank you. Uh, as Kai mentioned, I'm here to speak on behalf of uh, the suppliers and the role we will play in the pledge. And to start, I'll just add a little more about Freeman. We are a global event production agency and a global leader. And we are really uniquely positioned not only to change what we do as a company by setting an example, but to influence how events are designed and produced. Uh, as a company, we look to reduce our impact through our zero waste initiative, which centers on four major areas of impact, resources, energy, air, and people. The zero waste goals work to reduce our environmental footprint by minim minimizing or eliminating waste throughout our supply chain. And we look uh, at how we can use materials, time, and talent, and space to create business models where sustainability is incorporated into every part of our strategy. Uh, in fact, Freeman was the first event production agency to earn both the ISO 14001 and the ISO 2012-1 certifications, which helped guide us 
and measure our actions and approach towards sustainability. Uh, further, we've also defined sustainability standards that are actually built into our service offering to ensure sustainability is part of every project we produce. And for Freeman, sustainability is not just about monitoring and measuring our environmental impact. It's also about taking action to really protect the industries we serve. As Kai noted, the pandemic really highlighted just how vital events are to business, small businesses, and local economies around the world. For example, a weather-related disruption for us might mean an event doesn't get produced, which we might not think is a big deal in this digital world we live in today, but the opportunities that in-person meetings create are really not replicatable online. Participation is great, but two doctors working on the same problem 10,000 miles apart who've met at a conference and have a major medical breakthrough can save thousands of lives. Or a buyer walking by a booth uh, with a product that she didn't even know she was looking for, it might spur a level of creativity that helps her take her startup to another level. So the impact of climate change on our industry has the potential to stifle innovation for decades, and we have a responsibility to not let that happen. Millions of workers and thousands of companies around the world rely on business events. And as suppliers, we have a responsibility to the organizer, the venue, and our corporate customers. And we know our efforts and our positive impact are amplified when we work together. So on behalf of the supplier community and on behalf of Freeman, we are very, very pleased to be part of this pledge and working with all the stakeholders to make this happen. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, and uh, looking forward to working with you and your peers on the roadmap work that lies ahead. Now, last speaker in my group here is uh, not too far away from me, actually one and a half meters social distance. Charlie McCurdy, um, you are the CEO of Informa Markets, the largest exhibition organizer we have across our industry. So what's, what's your take on the pledge? Well, uh, thank you, Kai, uh, and um, thank you, Glasgow, for hosting the world as well as uh, hosting the planet. There's a couple of questions I'd like to, um, to address today. Uh, the first one is, is this. Uh, from the perspective of an exhibition organizer, why is the rapid acceleration of the event industry's approach to climate change so important to Informa as an exhibition organizer? Well, it, it's, of, it's of crucial importance. The, we all know there's a need for action in every walk of life and in every industry, and the exhibition industry is, is no different at all. Our customers, our colleagues, and our investors, they all want to work with, work for, and invest in businesses that, that take sustainability uh, seriously. Uh, for instance, 80% of our customers, 80%, tell us they want to work with businesses that are proactive about climate change. Our investors, they want our, their investments to raise their game in taking a responsible approach to sustainability. And our colleagues expect this, and increasingly future talent seeks out sustainable companies. Another point is that we all in the, uh, in the exhibitions industry have a, a duty to protect the planet. We're signing up to the Net Zero Carbon Events Pledge and publicly committing uh, to reducing the industry's impact while expanding the benefits we can provide, and I'll explain that in a minute. At Informa, for example, our Faster Forward Sustainability Program targets the areas where we, as exhibition organizers, can have a real impact. Three of the top areas are, first, reducing the direct carbon impact of our shows. We do this through eliminating the use of disposable or single-use stands and working with venue partners, such as, such as Alan and Monica, to use renewable energy to power our shows. The second area is reducing the carbon impact of business travel. This is important. We, we, we provide platforms to help participants become more efficient, particularly in relation to business travel, by intensely concentrating commercial activity in one location Participants at our shows save between two and five flights for every trip to an exhibition, a number we are expanding upon through better use of data. The third area 
is the acceleration of the adoption of sustainable practices across the markets and regions we serve. Our platforms are at the heart of dozens of industries all over the world. And our greatest impact is through the specialist content, resources, and expert connections we deliver to those communities. More than 40% of our activity is in the Global South, which is benefiting from the access to innovative solutions and to developmental resources. We are a real force for change in our markets as an industry, helping companies and their colleagues to answer the big questions around how to become more sustainable. At Informa, we call this sustainability inside. So the second question is this, what are some, what are some specific examples that Informa is doing in this regard? And just to expand upon those three areas I discussed, we believe exhibition organizers as a group can have the, mo have the most impact that I just m mentioned in these three ways. First, once again, reducing the direct impact of our shows. The majority of the exhibition's industry's waste comes from disposable or single-use stands. We are working with exhibitors across the world and expanding the use of renew reusable stands in a program we are calling Better Stands. Elsewhere in our business, we, we hosted the first trade show to achieve platinum certification under the Event Industry Council's Sustainable Event Award, uh, Standards. Next year, in 2022, we are targeting at least 90% of all our electricity usage at venues to be renewable, while we continue to work with them to reduce our collective carbon footprint. The second area is reducing the carbon impact of business travel. I think we can all see, we can hear, and we can feel the benefits of meeting in person when we all come to events like this. It's a prime example of the unique position B2B events offer to drive change and, 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 and education. It's a, it's a really highly efficient platform for bringing key decision makers all together to make commitments and create solutions for the world. In a survey of 20,000 attendees at our events, participants saved between two and five flights. That's time, that's money, and that's carbon saved, and we can do more. The third area, again, is accelerating the adoption of sustainable practices across every one of the markets and regions we serve. Exhibition organizers, we're, now we're all in a unique position to help many markets and regions around the world to accelerate their own carbon reduction plans by highlighting the challenges they face and promoting potential solutions. For example, for the fashion industry, we have introduced a popular sustainable sourcing pavilion at our major U.S. trade shows. Also, we hold gatherings across the value chains of the maritime and aviation industries, and we consciously work in content and discussions toward transitioning to a low-carbon economy. So overall, our exhibitions foster sustainable prosperity. Thanks, Guy. Thanks, Charlie, and uh, thanks, Alan, Monica, and Bob. Now, what we tried to give you in a short span of time was an overview of what has already been done in giving you confidence that the pledge we are presenting is something we as an industry are ready and willing to build on. This is an all-hands-on-deck call for the global events industry, and uh, I know I speak for Central, I see you nodding, Sento uh, from ICA and Sven from AIPC and all the colleagues from the associations who are activating their respective memberships around the world who are not in the room today. We have the skills, we have the certifications, we have the education, and we have the good practices to share. And we simply call on everyone in the industry, from the education colleagues of doing the, working with the EIC, you mentioned them for the certification, through uh, education models at ICA, AIPC, through good practices that we have at UFI and IAPCO and everywhere, to put your best foot forward, put your best people forward, and work on making that pledge come true as quickly as possible. Now, let me turn the program back to you, Miguel, for some perspectives from industry stakeholders. Thanks, Kai, and, and, and colleagues for that. 
Uh, I think, again, from the previous session, it's clear that the industry is already doing a lot. Eh? Uh, it's already implementing a lot of sustainability activities, uh, but still decided that that was probably not enough, and, uh, and this pledge was, was born. So in the next uh, group of colleagues that we're going to be hearing from, uh, the idea is to understand why, right? why the pledge is important, what are their expectations in uh, participating in this, why they decided to participate. So first of all, I would like to hand over to Ms. Barbara Weissacker, and uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. That's the German way, I hope. Uh, she is Secretary General of the European Major Exhibition Centers Association, or EMECA. Uh, do we have, yes. Hi, Barbara, nice to see you. Hello, hello everyone, I'm here. Thank you for having me and giving us this possibility to speak here. Thank you, so, thank you for joining. Actually, uh, so we have one question for you. Uh, the thing is, uh, as we have heard already, the, uh, exhibition centers, venues, have already or have very long supply chains, right? And also a lot of potential to influence many different stakeholders, your suppliers, uh, the participants in the events, uh, the, uh, everyone who is involved in, in hosting events like, like the one we have here today. Um, now, EMECA has also uh, initiatives on, on sustainability already. So what is or what was the motivation for you to, to join and to support this, this activity? Um, yes, so venues in Europe, which I represent, uh, do not start from zero at all. Huh? We have members that have been climate neutral um, since more than 10 years, and there are many great examples for reducing scope one and two emissions. Huh? So it was mentioned with the energy and all these things. Um, furthermore, certification and reporting are common and often even requested from the exhibition or event organizer side. We also heard that. Now, uh, scope three emissions are um, more complex in our industry due to the large variety of business relations along the value chains and on the customer side, as you mentioned. Many venues have found or are developing strategies on how to address uh, this issue. So among EMECA, but also UFI and EIA, the European Exhibition Industry Alliance, um, there is a huge interest to exchange, collaborate and make joint steps towards becoming net zero carbon. We run uh, working groups within the single associations, but also exchange widely with the colleagues from the service partners like transport and logis logistics uh, or stand building, catering, etc. And um, this on an association level, which then influences the respective memberships and on individual company level at one venue with their stakeholders. This is, in fact, why the Net Zero Carbon Events pledge comes at the right time for our industry, to structure the process, help with measuring and reporting, and to incentivize all players along the value chain um, to actively and speedily adopt the changes. So these are the changes inside our operational scope. Further to agreements on how to move forward, meaningful supplier engagement, clear procurement rules and contracts may drive the adoption from a venue perspective. Additionally, in Europe, strict legislation as to waste, for example, leaves no margin for competition. And by the way, yeah, putting a price on waste has huge effects on the materials used and volumes left behind. Um, it is a bit trickier when it comes to the mission caused by our visitors and exhibitors outside our operational scope, especially in relation to travel and hospitality. Also, this has been mentioned uh, by Bob. Um, a single trip to an event or exhibition does reduce individual travel substantially. However, this single travel still needs to be adapted. And this is where we work with our neighboring industries in the travel and tourism segment too, who themselves work also hard on reducing their emissions for hotel, restaurants, local mobility and long haul travel, just to mention the main ones. Um, in, in parallel to co uh, collaborating with these, Emeka and UFI, who form the European Exhibition Industry Alliance, work closely with the European Commission to determine transition pathways and policies for recovery and towards a more sustainable and resilient future. Um, for that, we participate in workshops, for example, uh, to co-create policies in webinars, conferences and stakeholder consultations. And I have to say, this is a very difficult exercise while we are still busy with 
reopening our business. Therefore, the policy process and the pledge do not come early, but in a difficult moment for our industry. The exhibition and professional events industry is one of the hardest hit sectors by the pandemic. We were closed for the longest time and have decreased our business by minus 68% in 2020 and 2021 might not be better. So due to the pandemic, many investments into upgrading or refurbishing infrastructure had to be postponed and we struggle with staff shortage and customers still being unable to travel. Nevertheless, I have to say, a record number of companies and associations have committed to the pledge in very short time and we totally understand the urgency and are ready to contribute actively to the changes. There is now a momentum that includes the entire value chain of events and trade fairs. And we are convinced that leading by example, us, uh, is the best and that we can educate partners and clients and boost behavior changes among the visitors and exhibitors too. And one another uh, very important element is our employees. They do support and even push. And if we want to attract new talent, it goes without saying that operating in sustainable way, also so socially sustainable, is crucial. So the platforms for meeting and exchanging that we offer for any business sector and knowledge community are key in general for the green transition of these economies. We see the future <laughs> for meeting, we see the future at our events, and we will do our utmost to accelerate dissemination of insights and market adoption of new technologies and products, for example, on our shows. So we are ready to work together with all stakeholders and our clients to boost the changes in order to achieve the 2050 net zero carbon goals. Thank you so much, Barbara. That was a very, uh, I think, uh, powerful message, very positive message. Uh, the COVID pandemic has been definitely, uh, uh, or has had a very big impact in your industry. Uh, but I think it goes without saying that the potential impacts of climate change could be much more significant, right? So uh, we would say, or I would say that uh, even when right now it's a difficult moment, definitely economically for, for the industry, it's also the right moment to look at, at how we can do things differently to avoid future future consequences for, for the industry to keep you going. So thanks a lot for that, Barbara. Uh, next, I would like to introduce Mr. Uh, Mike, uh, ah, 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 now I lost here, Mike Simon. <laughs> uh, Mike, he is CEO of Raccoon Events. So from an exhibition center, and we have heard from several uh, of them, we now move to uh, an, an event organizer. So Mike, um, Raccoon is a relatively newcomer right, to the, to the industry, uh, having been founded just uh, a few years ago, relatively, compared to some of the old timers here. Um, you have uh, social sustainability and, uh, and environmental sustainability included in the strategy for the company since it was founded. Uh, and you already have a carbon neutrality target for 2025, so in a few years' time now. Uh, why, from your perspective, joining this pledge? Um, I, I... Helen, I'm sorry. I guess the first question would be, why not? I mean, this is such an overwhelmingly positive statement of intent for our industry that it just felt like something that we had to be a part of. Um, and, and I think what we've realized is through the activities that we've engaged in over the, over the previous few years working towards our net zero target is that we can't do this alone. We need to work together and, and working in silos is, is certainly not the answer. So being part of this pledge and this initiative feels like a really big opportunity for us to learn from others and hopefully to share some of what we've done and provide some value to other people across the value chain. So if, if I were to describe our company by way of an introduction, we are an exhibition organiser that organises events for people that enjoy being active outdoors. And you would think that those people, those communities, they have sustainability quite core is, is what they believe in, and it's, it's a big part of what they do. So for us, it's an obvious place for us to play. It's an obvious thing for us to do to focus on sustainability. But I think it goes beyond that. And I think as a CEO of a business, as, as a human being, as a dad, I think we have a moral responsibility to act on this issue. And I think we have, the time to do that is now. The time for talking is done and the time for action is now. And that's what we've challenged ourselves to do as a business. And we sat down in a room and we set ourselves a big goal and the big goal was net zero by 2025. And we thought we'd set that goal and figure out how to work towards it and work backwards. And that's pretty scary. That's, that's actually quite terrifying because all of a sudden we were worried about how much is this going to cost? Um, how long is it going to take? Do we have the skill set? What if we get it wrong? 
Um, and, and that can almost cause paralysis. It can almost stop you from doing anything. And if something feels too big and too scary to tackle, you can't even start. And actually, that's when we decided as a business to settle on an imperfect solution. And, and I think accept that we weren't going to get it right first time. It was going to be something that we would have to adapt and evolve and learn from. And actually, once we took that step, actually, we realized that we, we could start this process. So we set the net zero by 2025 target. We, we, we realized we wanted to make it meaningful. We didn't just want to do an offset. We genuinely wanted to change our behaviors over a sustained period of time. And, and that meant focusing on the measure reduce process, which I think has been talked about a lot today. And, and doing that again and again, measure reduce, measure reduce, and then finishing with an inevitable offset in 2025. Um, we've broken our events down into four categories uh, that are our main categories, and then we have a significant uh, sort of swathe of data behind each one. And those categories are ourselves, our own activities, our suppliers, our exhibitors, and our visitors. And we're currently in the process of going through the measurement process, which is really frustrating as an action oriented small business when all you want to do is just fix stuff and do stuff, when actually all we've been doing for the last 12 months is measuring. But that measurement is giving us the insight and the information that we need to actually have a meaningful engagement with our stakeholders, our partners, our suppliers, our audiences, so that actually when we talk to them, we can talk about the changes that we need to take and we can bring them along on a journey. So if I could say one thing, I would say spend the time on measurement. Um, it, it, it seems slow and painful, but it is worth doing. I think we've now got to a point where we've measured our first two shows partially um, and we are going to continue that process on an annual basis so that by 2025 we should be ready to do an offset and be net zero. That isn't the end of the process. Getting to net zero is not the end. Our aim is then to continually measure what we do, continually reduce the impact we have so that actually our offset gets lesser and lesser each year. And that then becomes a commercial incentive for you as a business because actually you're spending money on an offset. So if you reduce the offset, it becomes kind of like a, a virtuous circle in that you're encouraging yourself to do the right thing and you're being financially compensated for doing so. So I think that's the right thing. And I think if there's any other small businesses out there like us who are, who are worried about doing this and are worried about getting it wrong, I would say take the time now, join the pre pledge, um, you know, be, be happy with an imperfect solution and just do something and get started. Thanks, Mike. Indeed, uh, and I hope with this collaboration we'll have some, some uh, tools and some guidance that will make the process of calculating your footprint less frustrating <laughs> and less, <laughs> less challenging. So looking forward to that. Um, uh, one, uh, just one comment from my side. Uh, we'll have a discussion about uh, uh, net zero, carbon neutrality definitions, etc. Uh, there's still confusion out there about what this means. The Secretary General himself has decided to put uh, together a, an expert group to work on, uh, on what that actually means and what credible commitments to net zero are. So let's see how that goes. Uh, but yes, definitely the, the offsetting is a, an element, at least as part of the, uh, of the work forward. And then throw, towards net zero, there may be offsetting of, of certain, ty uh, certain types, et cetera, but uh, to, to be decided. Good, excellent. Uh, so with that comment, which I shouldn't be doing because I'm supposed to be facilitating and not <laughs> commenting. <laughs> uh, we have our next uh, speaker, uh, who is uh, Ms. Stephanie Dubois, Head of Event Operations at SAP. So, Stephanie, uh, I mean, some people in the audience may be wondering why SAP, not being a company that is actually focused on, on the events industry, is actually taking the pledge or it's moving towards, towards that. Um, so, could you let us know why it is important for, for you? Um, thank you, Miguel. Um, supporting such a pledge, quite frankly, is a no-brainer. Um, as a company, we have corporate events that are meant to bring our brand to life. That means our brand, brand identity, our brand message, and sustainability has become a massive, major part of SAP's strategy overall um, because it's the right thing to do because it makes good business sense for all of those reasons. And so our events have to, we have to walk the talk, right? Um, we have very, very ambitious uh, goals as a company as well as, a, as an events team 
for example, um, carbon neutrality by 2025. We also mean to uh, chase zero waste, zero inequality. So we have very ambitious targets. We also deliver large events. And we are very aware that we can't achieve those ambitious goals on our own any more than we can achieve you know, delivering those large events on our own. We need the entire community of suppliers, vendors, partners to work and walk in the same direction. So this pledge, which brings this entire industry, entire community together with a commitment, with accountability, with an exchange of information and knowledge and best practices, that's exactly what we need to be able to achieve our own goals. We need the entire industry to come up with, we were talking about measurements, consistent ways to measure so that we know year from year what the benchmarks are and how we compare to those and how we compare to what we did last year and how we get better. We need the entire industry to work together to achieve those goals. Sustainability is massive challenge. We've established that a number of times and is not one that can be tackled um, in isolation. So yes, supporting the pledge is definitely something we want to get behind, very much so. Thanks, Stephanie. Yes, I think the the UN system itself, as an organizer of a few events here and there, we also have an interest in, in seeing the, the industry help is, uh, helping us make uh, this COP and future COPs, future COPs more sustainable for, for ourselves. So, cool. Uh, we also have an interest in, 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 in seeing movement in this industry. Uh, good. Lastly, I would like to introduce uh, Ms. Cristina Pache. Uh, she is chair of the sustainability group at the e-scooter championship. So welcome, Cristina. Uh, as with SAP, uh, maybe some of us or may, may be asking ourselves why the e-scooter championship here. Obviously, you put out events, you organize events, but not uh, you don't have the same role as the, let's say, the core uh, industry members that, that we have here, exhibition centers, event organizers, et cetera, et cetera. So why uh, are you joining from your side? So first of all, thanks for uh, inviting us, and uh, thanks for uh, like um, to the event industry for welcoming the sport into this pledge. Um, I think sport has got uh, a fantastic uh, opportunity to showcase the change that you want to make and to actually showcase the climate action that each of you is, uh, is putting together. And when we think about sport, we always think about uh, the athletes, the driver, the rider, and always thinking about the cars or for, for us, for example, about the electric scooter. And that is something that we know how to make it sustainable very well. Where most of us are engineers, so we, sustainable innovation is very easy to do. But what we are not very good at is at events. We put it together lifestyle sustainable events, and we need your help. We need help from the event industry that has been done that for ages and know the best practice and can actually help us to bring together and to bring alive and to showcase what these change are and to educate people because people come into the racing to enjoy the race, but also to enjoy the lifestyle events. And if the lifestyle event is sustainable, that is a great thing. So as you said, I'm the chair of the sustainability working group of the e-scooter championship. And um, what we have done in the first year of uh, our existence is in looking to the technology of the scooter and make sure that was 100% sustainable. We have measured our carbon footprint. We have made sure that uh, our headquarters is sustainable. We are in a net zero building in Holborn. We got like a green wall. It's all fantastic. But we're going to race in 2022. So that is where we need uh, some people from the event industry in our working group, and we also need to listen to your working group that you will create to try to bring this pledge. So definitely, I think the pledge is, uh, the net zero event pledge is the right place to be. And I was delighted to see in the uh, slide that Kai has shown that other motorsport as well and motorsport venue are also taking that approach. That is uh, really refreshing to see. 
Wonderful. So the, from this side, Kai, I think uh, well, it's also clear that the connections between industries are there, and we have not even touched. Well, actually, I think Bob uh, or uh, Charlie mentioned the the relationship, the obvious relationship with aviation, transportation in general. But there are many other uh, relations or synergies, potential synergies with other industries that we will try also to bring to to the table. So, Q and A. Q and A. Good, so actually we're doing quite well on time. <laughs> uh, we have half an hour left. Um, I see, I have a little light here that is telling me there are no questions online, at least not yet. You correct me if I'm wrong, no. Nope. And uh, so, uh, if we have questions from the floor. Uh -huh. Yes, I cannot see your table number, but please go ahead. If you introduce yourself just briefly, thanks. Yeah, hello, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for this panel. I'm Jesus Herrera, I'm from Mexico. Uh, I represent Savio Company. I'm also part of the Sustainability Working Group of UFI. I have been uh, helping the events organizer to execute the ISO 2012 one since seven years ago. And also we have been doing uh, net zero events since seven years ago. So I'm here to serve and let's collaborate together. Okay, thank you. So that's an, an offer to help. Thanks a lot. We'll take you up on that one. Uh, any other questions for people who are following online, you can use the chat uh, also to, to pose your question. No, sorry, not your chat. You can uh, raise your hand so that we can see and the technical team can see that you want to ask something. Good, I think we have, yes, I see here number nine. Is that correct? Yes. Um, Hi, my name is Laboni Saha. I am representing a company called El Saha. We are a sustainable luxury brand. Um, there was mention of cross-industry across events, and I want to pick up on the fact that as fashion brand, I'm aware of so many events that are happening in the fashion industry. Um, and you know, particularly the fashion week that happens across all the fashion capital and the impact we create is often frowned upon by environmentalists and you know, the carbon footprint uh, just uh, from the flights that are taken to go to all these fashion capitals during fashion week is quite phenomenal. So it's really interesting to hear a lot of things we touched on, but I think a lot of things probably are lost in translation from the point where it's happening to the point it's actually implemented. So how can we speed up the gap? What can we do to, you know, make sure no matter how small or large the event, you know, it's actually genuinely sustainable? Because I can tell you September we were doing a small show for Fashion Week and I approached four different venues and all of them told me we were the most sustainable hotel. So, I mean, you know, it's great to hear that, but how? You know, there's a missing link somewhere that I feel like we need to fill. I can perhaps take that and talk a little bit about the process that now lies ahead. Because obviously agreeing on a pledge and, and announcing it is, if you so wish, the foundation for the work that lies ahead. And the work that lies ahead is, and Mike, you referenced that, you need to measure. And so you need to identify what it is you can measure. And if four hotels say they are the most sustainable, then they will probably all use a different set of metrics. So the work ahead for the companies and institutions who are supporting the pledge is the work on the frameworks and on the roadmaps. How we measure, what we measure, uh, what actually defines the most sustainable ho hotel at a destination from the events industry perspective. It will also help us to clarify, and that's where working together with the UN is so important, will help us to clarify with our colleagues on the aviation side, on the hospitality side, on the infrastructure side, who can focus best on getting to zero fastest in their respective area of expertise. And then you're in all that scope two, scope three conversations. That will surely be an important part as we will evolve frameworks and standards for terminologies and classifications that will help you answer your question which one is the most sustainable hotel going forward. And beyond that, an open invitation to you and every small entrepreneur player in the events sector and in all the sectors that events serve through marketplaces and meeting places, 
activate the network of your peers in your industry and activate the network of the colleagues you work with across the event sector to find the answers to these questions. We're all asking the same questions and we're coming together to find the best answers. Thank you, thank you. I don't know if any other of the colleagues here would like to, yeah, please go ahead, Stephen. I just wanted to add, I think it's, you know, very much a matter of transparency. I think we have to communicate a lot more and better. I used the expression earlier, walk the talk, that involves talking. We need to say what we're doing. I know at SAP we've, we've had major efforts long, for years, long before it was fashionable and nobody knew about it. Um, and so I think it's very, very important that we transparently explain what we do, why we do it, how we do it, that will hopefully inspire others, that will challenge others, that will change the perceptions that our industry is a source of pollution and nothing else. We can also be part of the solution, and I think that's a, a major component. Part of the solution, definitely, I think I already mentioned that we're in the middle of an event, right? And uh, uh, moving forward on the negotiations on climate wouldn't happen with that and events in person. So yes, definitely part of the solution, highlighting that and, and then taking real action to, uh, to address the emissions of coming together. Um, I know that we have a lot of experts around the table and beyond the ones that, that have uh, contributed today speaking. So if anyone else would like to jump in at any question, please also let us know. Do we have uh, other questions? Yes, uh, please. I cannot see your number 11 or something like this. Please go ahead. Hello, my name's Anita Howard. I'm from ICE, um, based here in the UK. I have a question. There's a lot of initiatives around that have tried to um, get this subject underway for some time. And I was just wondering what's going to be different about this initiative? Thanks, Anita. Uh, who wants to take that one? I think I, you, you want to say something? Well, I can take it. It's, I think it's the fact that we have been able to aggregate the players to come together and we are driving this with the guidance of the UN in the most inclusive way possible. So it's really an open invitation for everyone who is active on the national, on the regional, on the international level to join in on this effort. It's not about owning it and this is also why we always say from the side of the Joint Meetings Industry Council we are hosting it, we are facilitating it. This is not run by Jameek. It is owned by the industry but it simply needs an entity to do the operational work. And that's right now, Jamik. So this really is an open invitation for everyone to join the collaboration and to put all your skills, all your experiences, and all your achievements into that joint effort to get to zero carbon as soon as we can as a sector. Because I personally believe we'll get there way before 2050 as we will learn, as we will collaborate. And I always say, if mankind could find a vaccine that works against COVID in a few months, we can find ways to get to zero carbon before 2050, if we just put our brains to it. But we need all the brains. Thank you. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, and before we go there, if I apologize, we have also a question online, and the technical team actually was saying <laughs> we may go there. So uh, let's hear the question from the participant online. Thank you. Who is that? <laughs> we know that face. Can you hear us, Barbara? You may be muted. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yes, I just wanted to add something um, to what Kai said and uh, the question before, why is this just another pledge? Um, we've been, especially in Europe, 
very active in the um, more generic CSR field, like 10 years ago, there was a big wave of engagement and everyone was in it, etc. And we have had reached a certain level where we thought, okay, we don't have to stress it anymore. It is normal that we do it. We don't have to, you know, uh, uh, as we were just saying, we have to talk about it. No, we thought this is something that everyone agrees. We have to have it. It's basic customers ask and there it is, but it's not sufficient anymore. And um, so this is this is now a little bit the, the second wave where we have to really get everyone in the entire chain. Um, this is venue perspective, obviously. Yeah? Um, and, and of course, you may say, oh, it's just another pledge. No, but I think now the urgency is, is so obvious that we have to agree really on common goals, not everyone doing something and um, in, in, in their corner and thinking that this is fine and different certifications and leads and I don't know, uh, different, I mean, we, we have to agree on also how to measure. And I think this is taking it now a step forward, unfortunately, because we are forced I think the steps that had been there 10 years ago, they were very advanced. But um, now it's different because we cannot we cannot continue like we had, you know, on a voluntary basis. Not at all. Thanks, Barbara. And yes, feel free to raise your hand if you have uh, other contributions to other questions, for sure. Uh, I, before I give you the, the floor, I just wanted to add from my side, uh, I'm new to your industry, right? I don't belong to your industry in principle. I'm new to, 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 uh, to your way of work. Uh, but I think the, the reason why this pledge could be different, right, because the, the, the test is now open if we are going to really deliver. It, the, the reason why it could be different is because it's trying to bring together the whole industry, the whole value chain, and even different players, right? We have here uh, corporate event organizers, we have some sports event organizers, we have a potentially uh, the, the door open to have collaboration with other sectors that have also a, a lot of uh, points of contact with yours, like the tourism sector. Uh, there are many things in common with them. Uh, so hopefully by bringing a wider group of stakeholders to try to align in the way things are done, measurement is one, but it's just the first one, uh, aligning in the next steps as well can be much more powerful than, than, the, than the initiatives that maybe have happened until now. That is not to say this initiative or this pledge aims to displace or replace or, or somehow uh, move to the side things that are having already been done. On the contrary, is to look at what solutions already exist, what tools already exist, and try to promote uh, more uh, our wider adoption and, and, and application. And then whatever there is a gap, try to see how, how we fill it. Good, sorry. With that, please. Hello, Dale Parminter um, from Global Agency, DRPG. We've been on a 15-year sustainability journey, um, and I just feel the, the 2050s just seems a long way away. And, and can we not bring that a little bit sooner? And I think also as an industry, we need to be starting to educate the delegates and the visitors to our shows and our conferences, because while they still demand single-use plastic and they demand um, giveaways and plastic bags, then we will still keep delivering it. So I think we need to put together some education programs for our visitors and our stakeholders. Many thanks. You want to say something, right, Christina? Yeah, I just wanted to say we were talking about education program before because I just was very well impressed with the Green Zone. Uh, they've got lots of uh, education programs on uh, sustainability in general that uh, we don't need to reinvent. They already exist. We just need to go there, take just to talk and cooperate with everybody else. And also about your 2050, um, I would say, yes, we can accelerate. But what we are talking is net zero. So we are not talking about carbon neutrality, where you just put a lot of money down and buy offset. We are talking about not generating any emission or whatever you generate, you can possibly inset if you own the lands or you can actually remove through technology. So that is something that will take possibly the ne next 20 years to solve. So if we use that, defini that definition that Miguel was saying, it's not as easy as it looks. Thanks. Thanks. I would agree with, with Christina. Yeah, and yes, 2050 feels a little bit far 
Uh, but uh, actually, 30 years is no time, right? Uh, 15, 30 years, 30 years will be gone in in in, uh, in a second. Um, but of course, as Kai was saying, he, he believes we can do it before 2050. Great. Uh, let's aim for as soon as possible, right? But uh, the, when the pledge mentions 2050, is at the latest, right? Because this, this is what science says: uh, the, by 2050, latest. But if we can do it earlier, uh, of course. Uh, the better. Good, so I think we have uh, Chris uh, first. Go on. Um, thank you very much and thank you for the invitation to attend. Um, I'm primarily going to echo a lot of the comments that have been said but maybe try and put a view on why we've reached a stalling point with a lot of the initiatives. There's a, the word events is very broad. We have meetings, conferences, exhibitions, travel. I represent the AEO, AEV and ESSA, who are three entities in the UK looking after the exhibition side. Uh, I chair the Associations Committee for UFI, which looks at the global exhibitions industry. Um, and through those two channels, we're sharing and collaborating. Um, furthermore, yesterday, there's an entity in the UK, another acronym, the Business Visits and Events Partnerships, which brings the outdoor and leisure events, but also meetings uh, together again. And we talk very much about this initiative so I think the key that why this can succeed is is the sharing and collaborating about what other people have been up to and there are some really good initiatives out there they have a common goal to bring forward 2050 I think that's everybody's ambition but I don't think ever before we've had a platform to do to collaborate and hats off to UNFCC of C have tried to do this and I think now we have an open door we have an absolute challenge from our customers to make it happen but we have a willingness from all the players and stakeholder groups to make it happen so I think everybody's got a part to play in collaborating which we've never had before and I think that's probably why this has more chance of seceding than anything else and we're certainly here to help uh, facilitate that going forward. Thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah, and thank you for for the offers or for support. We'll be working uh, together, hopefully. Yes, very closely. Uh, I think Santu wanted to go next, right? Yeah. Thank you, Miguel. I think uh, looking at uh, most of the questions and why this pledge, just want to echo on what all of us have been talking. When we started this, it just was quite uh, not a long time ago, about six months back, Kai, when we all got together. This, it, the main objective of this pledge is creating a tangible awareness. Many of you said that you have many uh, initiatives going for over, over decades, some are two decades, but always it's been we are going on parallel roads and we have been initiating as organizations, associations, companies on our own. But this, uh, it's, uh, this time we all have got together in the history of our industry. Uh, I can talk about all our, all our membership across our associations, AIPC, UFI, ICA, and all of us. We, for the first time, in the in our history of uh, events in our history, if I talk about the industry, we have got together and synergized all our approach towards this pledge. I think that's a big milestone we have achieved. And that itself is guarantees that we are going to move forward with this pledge. The second part is that across the globe, uh, across uh, among all our members, the awareness was the biggest challenge. I mean, you just spoke about carbon neutrality and net carbon zero. What are these terminologies? That's a big challenge across the world if you go to the southern hemisphere and other parts of the world. But we as all the global players, the big companies, big associations getting together to drive that knowledge so that from a smaller company, from a startup, to the biggest, largest venues, bureaus, event meeting planners, all are going to come part of this. So I don't know about the period we all are talking, we all, like Dale mentioned, will be glad to achieve it before 2050. But most importantly, the funding and the awareness was the biggest challenge we are in driving this initiative. So now we have got the first step, the tangible awareness created, and of course we'll, we were talking before we started, next step we'll getting into the funding source. So we are on the right track, so I'm sure we'll get there. The other most important, UNFCCC, we didn't have that endorsement in the past as an industry. So thanks to Miguel and the entire team for endorsing that, so now we have a vehicle to drive through. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, we have the easy part, right? Endorsing is easy. You will have to do the job to work. Uh, by the way, I think majority of people here know Sentil, but for those that don't, he is CEO of ICA, the International uh, Conferences and Congresses Association. Did I get it right? Conference, Conference and Conventions Associations. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have another one here. Yes, please go ahead. 
Sure, thank you. I just wanted to address the question of timetable. Um, as someone who will be 100 years old in 2050, I have a real incentive to see something happen before then. Um, I have children, I have grandchildren. I have a need to leave the world a better place than it is now. And it is my responsibility to be part of the pledge in order to help others who feel the same way to achieve that goal. What has been done here is not an end. This is simply a beginning. But it's a way that we can all move forward together. We can understand what we need to measure, how to measure it, and how we can get to the place we all want to be. So I applaud all of the efforts, and I look forward to meeting again in 12 months' time to review how much progress we've made, because I think this will become something that we do need to have our own set of measurements, our own meeting, our own event to consider. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes, we'll, we'll be meeting regularly and uh, reporting publicly, at least in, in one year time. Yes. Excellent. I don't know if we have additional questions online. I don't see any. Any uh, additional comments, suggestions? Everyone here, most people here are experts on the topic. <laughs> if not, do you want to do the honors? Do the honors. Hey, Alan, I always thought we are the same age. I'll only be 80 in 2050. <laughs> but I think it's a worthy aim that everybody here in the room shall be there when we as an industry get to zero carbon. Yeah, shall we all agree on that as an outcome for today? So. Thank you all for coming. I learned one thing from Chris Keith. If you end the meeting early, you can give the gift of time. So uh, here we are, 10 minutes extra time for everyone to do networking, conversations to follow up at this wonderful event, COP26. Kathleen, photograph. And the speakers will go with Kathleen. Thank you for joining. Uh, please follow up on the netzerocarbonevents.org website for the pledge and for details. Please share your questions, your input. Um, help us to get there. And thank you already for everyone's support. Miguel, you want to see us off? Actually, I don't know what else I can add. Just uh, thank you for the commitment so far, and that we hope to see many more in the, in the days to come and the months to come. Uh, again, just to stress, this is the start of the journey. Uh, now the, the real test comes, which is uh, really uh, doing significant work, uh, substantial work to help us get to, to what we are pledging to. So thank you for, for your commitment, very good step, and we're just getting started. Thank you. <laughs>